exhale, breathe out, as they say in primary school. Breathe in again. Breathe out. Okay. That means you are living. Am I correct? Aha. Uh -huh. Corruption and lack of integrity is the reason why Africa is where it is today. And I'm sure that one, two, three, I've counted us for about 50 something. I believe that there will be a new breed of the number of people here injected into the system from today. From today. I believe you came here not just because you wanted to while away your time. Many usually are called, few are chosen. Those few determine whether they attend or not. Did anybody force you here this morning? So I've come up with this and I've noticed that life is about networking. Networking with like minds. Like minds. Yahoo people know where they meet. Ritualists know where they meet. Dangerous, wicked, stealing, corrupt leaders know where they meet. And very great minds too know where they meet. So I believe that we have great minds here who will work in, in integrity and who will transform Nigeria and Africa. If you're one of such people, let me see your hands. Thank you. I like to give you my own definition. I, I got it from the Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary. And it says, integrity is defined as the quality of being honest. What did I say? Eh? Quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. The problem we've had in the leadership and governance, Africa and all of that, corruption, corruption, we're talking, I want to believe is a problem of identity. To start with, you don't even know who you are. Because if you knew, you would not want to cut corners. Now, this is very important. You don't want to cut corners. Why I say this, you breathe in and breathe out, is because you are living. Every human being you see who is alive actually is an individual on an assignment. When God created you, he had something in mind. Nobody was created by accident. Hope you know that. It doesn't matter where you were born, how you were born, to whom you were born. What matters is why you were born. Hello? It is only in Africa a lot of people don't have an idea. All we know how to do in Nigeria and Africa is to clap for the few who have discovered what they were created to do. We clap so much. Clap so much for them. Forgetting that every human being, all of you here, you see people who have one leg. Yes, God created them because those who make artificial legs can actually function. Those who cannot see were created so that those who treat those without sights can walk. Everything, everybody has a role to play in life. In Africa. Africa. We've been sleeping. Say wake up. Say wake up. Why would someone get into office and he has only four years and he wants to finish himself, he wants to die there. If he's still in such a way that the generations coming behind him will pay. It's because one, he does not know who he is. I tell people that it's only when you know what you are worth, you can dictate and get out of life what you want. Amen? Hello? Do you understand me? So a lot of us don't even have an idea. I said it many years because I'm used to, you know. A lot of us don't have an idea of what you are worth. Like me now, when I was created, I didn't know. So I will share my story with you. I was born into a wonderful family. Wonderful family. I say it humorously that we were born into, uh, you know, father, mother, children, and 12 children. 12. 12 children. We were born in the north. Then my father came to Lagos by accident. And they wanted to give birth to more children. So me and my siblings, we want them. Babana, Mamana, Wala, if you born any other Pekin, everybody will die for the family. Try it. So the last one then is still the last one now. Now my, God, my, my father got a, a contract and came to Lagos. That was what brought him. And when you hear contract, you think the government gave him contract. No. He got his first contract as a Megad in Lagos. That was what brought all of us. You understand? But the truth is that I was born into an average family, a put meta then. Then we went to first stack, my dad started making money and this and that. Then from there things went bad. Then I went to Okukumaiko, where I stayed about 13 years. That was my formative stage as a young child, growing into a teenager. And I grew among people who had myopia, 
who still have myopia. Association, very important. You must determine the kind of people you mingle with. If they pollute your mind, that is how you go forever. Anyone who had a bright, nice car who came to our area then would say, ah, no, 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 this one did juju, he did jazz. He did juju, he did jazz. Uh, as if it was not possible for us to amount to anything in life. Hello? But gradually, God helped me. My orientation changed. When I was in secondary school, everywhere would be dirty. Only me will determine to make things clean. They used to call me Oli Oli. They used to laugh at me. But I left that secondary school. I continued like that. When I finished secondary school, I became a teacher. Now, this is a real life story. A wise man said, the secrets of great men are in their story. So let me share it with you. I see myself as a great man. I don't know about you people. If you're a great person here, let me see your hands. You are sure you will turn Africa around, you will change everything. When it gets your own turn, let me see. Okay, and it starts from now. And that's why you came here in the first place. Usually events like this, you don't find a lot of people coming. Only those who will effect a positive change usually determined by themselves to be present. So I want you to put your hands together for yourselves to start with. When we hear about Mandela, 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 he was one of the greatest men who ever lived on earth. Do you know that? Integrity. Integrity. Am I correct? Now, I started that way. Let me quickly, let me compress everything. Let me compress. I, I, it took me like a week to prepare this. And when I came here, it's part of what I want us to discuss too. Now, we were told the event to start by 10. And where I come from is very far. And I got here by 18 minutes after 9. 15 minutes actually. But by the time I parked and waited and I saw everything, it was 19, 9.18. So I came here very, very early, waiting for you, leaders of Africa. I waited for you. So I think it's only fair. You allow me. Come, come as you can peep into it so that you know that there's a lot we've not. Okay. So, so just hold, hold it. You'll be my backup, you know. Like, like an artist, you know, with a backup that has swag. But don't talk until I say you should talk. But honestly speaking and seriously speaking, we are here to change the face of this continent we call Africa. Hello? And if you are willing to do that, let me see your hands, please. It's very important. It's very, very important. Now, I got to Okuku, where I started. I was a teacher. I was paid 500 naira monthly. And I didn't look at the salary. I worked with the whole of my life. 500 naira. Till now, they are still owing me 100 naira. But I dashed them. Now, integrity. Integrity. I used to follow the students up as if my life depended on it. I had not discovered who I was there, though. Remember, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know my identity. But I worked in integrity. Two. I moved to a place they call Doing, where they make Doing Cubes. If you've heard of that place, I was a factory staff there for two years. They were paying me 1,000 plus, morning, afternoon, and night shift. Their AC almost froze, it almost froze my destiny. But I was working there with integrity. All the other people would say, no, I didn't pay us well now, so we want to work. I worked with the whole of my life. As a tenant in Okokoden, Every other person will be moving about. They will not do anything. I used to clean the place up. That same Okoko now, God has helped me. I've built a house for my mother there. It's space. It is gradual. It does not come overnight. If it's going to be transgenerational, it will never come overnight. So we must do things through due process, whether you like it or not. It is slow, but it is sure. Everyone who has stolen money in Africa, in Nigeria, you know, you, you are not patient enough to see their end. It's usually bad. They have invested in cancer. You stole money from multitudes of people and you are buying Rolls Royce. It's a Rolls Royce category of cancer such people end up with. Do you know that? Now, quickly, before I leave, I told you that it's a problem of identity. If you know who you are, you won't want to cut corners. You wait for your time because you know your onions. You know that whether you like it or not, you are giving. You are contributing your own quota. But if you don't know who you are, you are finished. I'm sorry to say. Now I know my own. I started with comedy. But I knew that comedy was not enough. And 
when you do what you've been created to do on earth, as you are doing it in integrity, as time goes on, there's what you call social capital. You are building it in that process. It takes 8 to 10 years to build a brand. This is about 13 years for me. And from time to time, I was doing it passionately. I met people. I've met presidents. I've met all kinds of people. I have other businesses that I do. I don't need to be corrupt to be successful. I don't need to be corrupt to be successful. There are times they ask us that I should write like 750 on my invoice. Then they will say me, I'll take 500,000 500, out of it. They've done it many times. I turned it down. A lot of agencies don't like me. But today I'm still relevant because they know. And whether you like it or not, people are watching you. Tell your neighbor, say people are watching you. They've been watching me. That was why LBS called me and I'm making me a case study today. Let me leave you with this. When you were speaking, sir, I like, I like your voice texture, your, your approach, and um, your professionalism as, a, as an MC. You know, I've been doing MC to this. It's MC that has brought me to this level. Eh? That's what that, that means. You have discovered your own without corruption. Are you not enjoying life now? Do you feel someone is looking for you to kill you? You are carrying it out, which is, right. So the same thing with me. Now I want you to know this because this is a problem in Africa. A lot of us don't even have an idea of why we are living. That's why when corrupt people embezzle money, you start clapping for them. It's a shame. Say to your neighbor, say it's a shame. So now quickly, you talked about Twitter. I will talk about WWW. When you hear WWW, what comes to your mind, please? World Wide Web. Now, the World Wide Web of Destiny, in my own words, the first one, if you want to write, write down. The first one is, the first W is, who are you? It's a question you must ask yourself. Your government can't do it for you. Your family can't do it for you. It is you. God created you because he wanted you to come and solve a problem in the society. Right. Who are you? You must know that. Two, what were you created to do? You must know. If it's Babin, you must know. If it's MC like him, or comedy, or athlete, um, being an athlete, or even an accountant, or a governor, leaders, you must know. Then the third one is, where were you created to carry out the assignment? It's very important. Who are you? What were you created to do? Where were you asked to carry that assignment? Once you know it, nobody will dangle anything in front of you to corrupt you. Why? Because you're an entity on your own. Now I'm rounding up. When you discover it, develop it. Develop it. What did I say? Say develop it and only use it positively in your society. Only use it what? Positively in your society. Before you know what's happening, you'll be celebrated. Use it in integrity. Integrity. You are serving other people, your, your generation generation and I'm sure everybody will be happy to or uh, will thank God for creating you it doesn't uh, if it falls down there's a sponsorship on it they'll give us and in fact throw it down one, one more time I'm tired of it I want I want the smaller one so with these few words I wish I had more time with these few words I hope that I've been able to understand uh, to ex explain to you rather that integrity it pays they call me to Asso Rock once in a while. I don't take corrupt. I, they pay me my own money. I'm not corrupt. I can stand up and say I'm not, bad, I'm not part of corruption. And because they've been watching me for years, I've spoken on the same platform with Miles Monroe, with Les Brown, Stephen Covey. I started with different people, but I chose to do mine, one, in an ethical way, no dirty jokes, nothing. And when they say it's 500, it's 500 I will write on my invoice. Not that I will put 1 million there. Then we defraud the organizers or whatever, whatever, whatever. Even government. I could go on and on and on. But what I pray for is that everybody here will make a positive change in this society. Enough of saying Nigeria or Africa has potentials. These are the potentials sitting here. And until you wake up, nothing will change. Your government can do. Your government needs help. Even governments are brought. They need help. Eh? So wake up today. Choose to operate in integrity. And um, the society will be happy you ever lived. Thank you very much. God bless you. Don't you think?
think he deserves another round of applause. Thank you. summary of all he has said simply boils down to talent is never enough because you have the the talent does not mean success being self-realistic is very important rediscovering who you are ladies and gentlemen in our midst today, we have an artist that has rediscovered who she is, why she is on earth, the reason why she is in existence. Ladies and gentlemen, before I introduce this lady, may I hand over the microphone to Soji Apampa for this presentation? Thank you very much. Please stay here. We'd like to invite um, Holy Malam to receive this commemorative plaque. You can see how heavy it is. We want you to know the weight of gratitude we, we have towards you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Wow. Let me showcase this. There we go. Um, let's thank um, Integrity Organization. Let, let, let's, let's put our hands together for them one more time. The, the job you have ahead of you, sir, is a very big one. Very, very big one. Was um, the mindset of a lot of young people in Africa has been eroded over the years by wicked 
bad leaders. So there must be a reorientation, and this is part of it. I just ask that God will give you more grace and get you bigger, not sponsors, partners, to make this achievable, because we're very big. We're very big, and I see it happening by the grace of God. Nigeria is getting better because of you and I. Say amen. amen. If you love Nigeria, please say amen. amen. And it's because of people like this. Thank you very much. I'm grateful. Thank you very much. Thank you. I told you earlier about rediscovering who you are. The reason why you are in existence. Your life is only useful when your life is not useful to you all alone. We have this lady that has made Nigeria proud all over the world. People listen to her music. She knows what she is doing. A philanthropist a lady that is ready to cry with the widow when the widow is sharing her stories. Ladies and gentlemen, may we please collectively put our hands together for Sasha. So, so you know that now we we now we we good morning everybody thank you for having me here today um okay i'm here to speak about my name is sasha aka sasha p you know now um i'm here to speak about integrity today sorry you said i decide you two from up here you know say my view they can't play <laughs> Okay, um, I don't just want to speak about integrity like a textbook, but I want to paint a little picture for us, so I'm going to tell you a story. Um, everybody knows what a scorpion is, yes? And we know what a frog is. So this story is about the scorpion and the frog. So one day, the scorpion and the frog were moving around across, you know, in the forest, and they wanted to go across the water. Now, the frog can go into the water, but the scorpion can't. So the scorpion says to the frog, Please, my dear friend, carry me across the water. And that one says, what if you sting me? He said, no, if I sting you, we'll both drown. So please carry me with you across the water. So the frog thinking, you know, what how can we do? It makes sense. We're going to drown if he does anything silly. He carries the scorpion across the water. And halfway through the water, the scorpion stings the frog. And then the frog starts yelling, why, why? And the scorpion said, it's in my nature. Let us pray. Let us pray. I was just joking. I wanted to demonstrate something to you. When I said, let us pray, why did you bow? Why did you bow? Yeah, you. Because I saw you bow, yeah. Why did you bow? Sorry? Why is it normal for you to bow? A sign of respect. Now, I just told you the story about the scorpion. The scorpion says it's in nature to sting. The fact that you realize that when you want to pray, there's a sign of respect to God, Abby. It means that it's in everybody's nature to be good. Abby? Because if you don't respect God, you don't care, you're not going to bow your head. So if it is in your nature to be good, then why do we do bad things? Because we can learn to be bad. When you steal that first meat from the pot, when you look over your neighbor's at assignment, when they say, oh, you're going to do jam, you people will be waiting outside for expo. You learn these things, and from little, little things, it becomes bigger things. And then you become tomorrow's president, and then they are using the money to buy shoes. So the point is that integrity is a decision to be consistently well-behaved, to consistently make the proper decisions, to consistently have a moral stand. Are you with me? So it's not something that you can just say, to be I'm good tomorrow, at least I've been good five times, so they know that I'm a good person. No. It's that consistency that builds a character that will live long after you're gone. You know some people, they'll say, ah, you can take my name to the bank. 
they don't really expect you to take it and go and cash a check. Nobody's going to give you money unless you want them to arrest you. Go there and say, ah, my, Sasha P is my friend, give me one million. They will just arrest you. But the point is that when you have a character and you are consistent, because a habit becomes a character, then your name will precede you. When things, something goes wrong in the office or wherever you work and they say, ah, something has gone wrong and everything, they say, ah, I can't be wrong, okay? Because they know that you have been consistently well behaved. Now, how does this relate to, because I'm an artist, so everybody's probably thinking, okay, you're a musician now. Where does integrity come in? Okay, here's how integrity comes in. As an artist, people realize, in fact, if you look around you now, there's nothing that they're selling that they're not using music. Am I right? There's nothing they're selling they're not using music. And when elections come, they are going to want to use music. Now, what do you do? After all, they don't pay us royalties now. So if somebody tells me, come and sing for governor, such and such, and they give me 50 million naira, I'll just stand there and say, you know, this guy is the guy you're supposed to be voting for. He's such a good man, very upstanding, blah, blah, blah. And people will be saying, yes, it's true. Maybe she knows him on a personal level. But they've paid me 50 million naira. And you see me riding car, you say, yeah, she's a musician. That's how she earned it. But you see, the thing is that if you followed my career closely, I have done campaigns politically, but they've been for 100 Voices Nigeria, they've been for Stand Up Nigeria, they've been for the people. I'm not going to stand up and tell you vote for a particular candidate, but I will tell you your rights and I'll tell you that you should vote because collectively our voice can make a difference. In the past few years now, young people have become more aware of what is going on around them. We did a campaign, I'm sure you saw the videos on Sound City, the vote respect, did anybody see that? during the voting, did you see, anybody see? If you're making money this year, put your hands up. You don't even want to make money, okay, bye-bye. <laughs> Wake up now, I'm talking to you. Yeah, so basically, we'll tell you to vote, but we won't choose your candidate for you because everybody needs to be aware of what's going on around them. Most of the time in Nigeria, and they might arrest me for saying this, sometimes it's deciding whether you want to vote for the kettle or the pot. Okay, which one is blacker? Let's just go with this one. It's a bit more clean. But the thing about it is that if you instill the right values in the youth, we, like it or not, we are the leaders of tomorrow. Very soon, these people are going to go, and then it's this generation that is breeding that is going to take over. And if we do not start educating ourselves, if we do not start sharpening ourselves to be the best that we can be, we're going to get there and do worse than what we have seen. We're going to get there in 20 years' time, and your children will still be saying up nepa. We're going to get there and planes will still be crashing. We're going to get there and simple things as the fact that the road is dirty, you finish eating gala, you throw, throw the wrapper out of the window. Those things are things that show your character. So the little I can say to you today is that for you to be great, you have to walk a path that is not wide. He spoke about Nelson Mandela today now. Why do you know him? Because he stood for something. And he stood for something that will live long after him. So whatever your dream is, whatever it is that you put your mind to, just decide in yourself that you're not going to be compromised. Nobody's going to bribe you. You're not going to, you're not going to say because of what I'm going to eat tomorrow, let me just take this little buck. Because the more you open that gap, the wider it becomes. And then one day you're going to wake up and you're going to be the public enemy. So before I leave you, I'm going to leave you with something, something that has guided me throughout my entire career. Um, it's an anonymous quote. I don't actually know who said it, but it says, always welcome change, but never let go of your values. Because you know, change is the only constant thing. So you're always going to be constantly put in situations that make you uncomfortable. Like women, men are always going to come at you and say, oh, if you want this promotion, you need to sleep with me. Somebody's going to say, okay, just change the number here and everything and everything will be okay. But if you have that instilled in you, that you will never let go of your values and your core values are positive, grounded in God and focused, then the sky is only the stepping stone. Thank you very much for having me today. I hope that has helped. Thank you. Let's have music from Sasha P. By popular demand. You don't want to pay for this one, Abby. Is in Niger's character free show? <laughs> See them. <laughs> okay, so what do you want to hear? Hopefully they have it. Okay. Shall we do it a cappella? Do you, do you know the chorus? Hey, I sing it for me first. Let me hear you. Hey. Keep your hands up, don't you cry. 
You can make it if you try. I die right. Everybody sing, hey. Keep your head up, don't you cry. You can make it if you try. Shala giri omwekum. Okay, so I'm going to need you to clap for me, eh? For my beats. <laughs> Strictly for swag. Let's go. I want to talk about the stress. Want to get it off my chest. Take my time and reinvest. Asking is it worth it? Want to sleep less nights. The fights and the crisis. The critics fighting. See, mama told me that every day is like this. Put your pen to paper. Never use your fist. Imagine how I came through my fist. Rhyming. Started my career. Blew it up with the tribesmen. A lot of people had their own opinions. Took it in my stride and stuck with my own she would be, should be, numb by the pressure, see I really wanna be me, inspiration gone, direction gone, packing my bags, I must be done, but my heart keeps drawing me back, see you can do it baby, one more time, everybody sing, hey, keep your head up, don't you cry, you can make it if you try, Thank you. Thank you. May I quickly invite Mr. Soji Apampa for an announcement? The quest. Okay. Second quest, if you're ready. What is the most reported Egunje transaction on the egunje.info platform? The most reported Egunje transaction you need to tweet it at pins2015 with the hashtag hash TTWU06. Same as the first one. Tweet it at pins2015 with the hashtag hash 
TTWU06. The prizes are coming. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a lady here that refers to herself as the servant in charge of a foundation where together with her team they cater for teenagers in need of some guidance and friendship with keen emphasis on sexual, emotional, physical abuse and have worked with over 50,000 teenager stroke youth over the period of three years and still counting. She is the radio host of Being Real with Aunt, I don't want to mention her name yet, a show designed to give real answers to real physical and emotional issues that are often masqueraded as spiritual matters. She believes in giving a practical solution to those things people generally refer to as spiritual challenges. She is also the host of Sharing Life's Issues, a weekend special program on 92 dot three inspiration fm though trained as a medical doctor this woman was able to extend her passion to counseling easily because it is always her dream to help people her inspiration is to see god use her help helpless the helpless people find hope in the words of her mouth and transform frowns into smiles she loves reading she loves taking works, doing movies with her hubby. Who is this woman? Her name is Dr. Yolanda George David. Please put your hands together for her. Please put your hands together for her once again. Hello, everyone. The lights are quite bright. It's nice to be back in town and I've been away for a while because I'm on maternity leave. My maternity leave is still on. But when Omlara contacted me, I said, if it's something about the youths, I have to be here. It's great to see that for once in a long while, I'm seeing swag, that's the word swag, being used not as an excuse for a young man to wear his trousers below his buttocks, but it's really as an excuse for us to figure out who we are, what we are, and what we can be. Unfortunately, many of the chairs are empty, but I'm hoping that with very few words, I'll be able to reach the minds of people who are going to listen here, and also, online hopefully this is going to go online to reach a lot of people i was asked to talk about integrity i was asked to talk about corruption i was asked to talk about how a youth can actually influence the nigeria they live in but i've actually chosen to talk about something else i've decided to speak to the hearts of the youths because I'm a youth. I graduated from Harvard when I was quite young. I went to school at 13. And so by 18, I was a medical officer from Harvard. And I'm not one of those kids whose fathers or mothers had the money to throw away. There, came to a, there was a point in my life where I saw I had to choose between becoming a professional of becoming someone who just came, lived, and went. I work with United Nations full time, and so last night when the news came that Madiba was dead, that's Mandela, it blew my mind away. Indeed, he was sick, but he died, and it seemed to me like the only leader Africa has, has died. I'm not made to be a leader. I'm too emotional. If you listen to my show, a girl's boyfriend leaves, he, leave her, leaves her rather, and I start crying. I can't lead a group of people, but I sure know I can encourage people to lead the rest of the world. So if you're sitting in here right now, I'm here to talk to the boy who can draw, but believes because his father doesn't know anybody, he's never going to be an artist. 
I'm here to talk to that footballer who is tired of playing on the streets and is hoping that a club somewhere will recognize him. I'm here to talk to that guy who has written GCE seven times and he has also failed. I'm here to talk to the girl who has resorted to keeping sugar daddies and sugar mummies because the government just don't work. Whatever your story is, trust me, I have heard better. The country is ours, even though I'm a foreigner, I'm married to a Nigerian, so I can say the country is ours. And even in America, no matter how well you say the government is working, I can proudly say to you that you're going to see a whole lot of useless young folks in America. Integrity, corruption, becoming somebody may be restricted because of what our government is doing, but the government is not just about the politicians. The government is also about you. When was the last time that you actually paid tax for the little things and little money you have gotten? When was the last time you settled the lecturer because you did not want to carry over a course? When was the last time you opened your mother's purse to steal money from there? We're talking about corruption. It's easy for everybody to say we voted them into power and you're doing nothing. But the group